Today, we're diving into the delete operation in binary search trees. If you remember, we've already covered insertion in search, but deletion is just as crucial and a bit trickier. Don't worry though, we'll break it down step by step to make it simple and clear. Before we dive into the details, let's quickly recap the key properties of a binary search tree. For any given node, all values in its left subtree are smaller and all values in its right subtree are larger. When performing a delete operation, it's crucial to maintain this structure. To handle this, we need to consider three scenarios, deleting a leaf node, deleting a node with one child, and deleting a node with two children. Let's begin with the simplest case, deleting a leaf node. Since a leaf node has no children, removing it is straightforward. We simply disconnect it from its parent by removing the reference. For instance, if we want to delete node six, which is a leaf, we update its parent, node 4, so that it no longer points to node 6. This effectively removes node 6 from the tree while preserving the binary search tree's structure. The second case involves deleting a node that has only one child. In this scenario, we bypass the node to be deleted by directly linking its child to its parent, ensuring that the binary search tree properties are maintained. For example, if we need to delete node 4, which has only one left child, node 3, we simply connect node 7, the parent of node 4, directly to node 3. Similarly, if the node to be deleted has only a right child, we link the parent to the right child. For instance, deleting node 13 means connecting node 11, the parent of node 13, directly to node 14, the right child of node 13. The third case involves deleting a node with two children, which is the most complex scenario. For example, consider deleting the root node, node 7, which has both a left and a right child. In this situation, we cannot simply remove node 7 because doing so would disrupt the binary search tree structure. Instead, we use a common approach. Find the in-order successor of node 7, replace the value of node 7 with the value of the in-order successor, and then remove the in-order successor node from the tree. The in-order successor is the smallest node in the right subtree of the node to be deleted, representing the next larger value after the current node. For instance, if we are deleting node 7, its in-order successor is node 8. We replace the value of node 7 with the value of node 8 and then proceed to delete node 8. This approach effectively removes node 7 while preserving the binary search tree's structure and properties. Why do we use the in-order successor? We can verify this by performing an in-order traversal of the binary search tree, which produces a sorted sequence of node values. Before deleting node 7, an in-order traversal would result in 1, 3, 7, 8, 11, 14. In this sequence, node 8 is the in-order successor of node 7. By replacing node 7 with node 8, we preserve the binary search tree's properties. Alternatively, we could use the in-order predecessor of node 7, which is node 3, to replace node 7. Both approaches effectively maintain the structure and rules of the binary search tree. Here's how the delete operation is implemented in Java. The implementation uses recursion to locate the target node. The code compares the target value with the current node's value. If the target value is smaller, it moves to the left subtree. If it's larger, it moves to the right subtree. When the target node is found, the deletion logic is applied. If the node has no left or right child, it simply returns its other child, effectively removing the node. This logic handles both deleting a leaf node and deleting a node with one child. If the target node has two children, the code finds the smallest value in the right subtree, the in-order successor, replaces the current node's value with this smallest value, and then recursively deletes the in-order successor. The helper function findMin locates the smallest value in a subtree by continuously moving to the leftmost node. Finally, let's consider the time complexity of the delete operation. Since the delete operation only processes one branch of the tree at a time, its complexity depends on the height of the tree. In the best case scenario, when the tree is balanced, the time complexity is O log N, where N is the number of nodes in the tree. However, in the worst case, if the tree degenerates into a linked list, the time complexity becomes O-N. This emphasizes the importance of keeping the tree balanced to ensure efficient operations.